Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is a quick review and overview of Sim EFB. So it's Sim Electronic Flight Back by Sam Smith. He reached out to me and said could I review this. It's a program as, it, as the name suggests an electronic flight bag for your simulator that lets you do so many things. I'm going to do a quick overview on it because there's so many features with this. And I'll try and do my best with this. So, without further ado, let's get on with the video. So perhaps the first thing I should mention is that uh, Sim EFB is not available at the moment. I've simply got a preview copy. Sam said it will be available of the middle of next month. So depending when you're watching this, that will be the middle of May. As you can see, we're in April at the moment. By the time you watch this, it may well be May. It's said for around 28 euro it'll be available so uh, that's pretty much a going price for this kind of package 28 euro from sim market aerosoft and other places whenever i find any more information i'll try and put it down in the description for you when you download it when it's eventually available you download it it comes as an exe file you double click that to install it points it towards your community folder you'll have an order number and your email that you ordered it from put that in and then the program will run and here it is as if by magic so this is very much the front end and it gives you a sort of uh, an example of a flight and flight plan and information that Sam set up so it's got things like uh, on the arrival airports here a sort of arrival chart or map of the airport departure route airways and goodness knows what I'll tell you what we do <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick overview there's so much to this apparently it's highly optimized for VR as well so if you're using uh, Flight Simulator 2020 in VR, these panels, you can highly optimize them to put them around your aircraft. You can have all these panels that I'll show you later in the simulator on a different screen. If you're using a dual screen setup, you can have all these panels on one screen and your simulator on the other. There's so much to this. And like I said, this video is simply going to be a quick overview and a quick example. I did set up a flight in Flight Simulator simply from Gatwick to London City Airport in a straight line. And that's what I have set up so far. In fact, oh, let me just get rid of all these because I kind of spoiled something there. Never mind. Something I was playing around with later, I'll put that information back in later. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So at the moment, there's not much there. It gives you the departure, airport information, you know, elevation, goodness knows what. And the arrival, that should come up automatically. All those different uh, statistics about the arrival and departure airports. Flight plan, nothing much in there. Watch this, watch this magic. I'll go to the arrival airport here, and I want more information about this. I want to get some charts up and goodness knows what. This little tab here, if I left click that and go Google for arrival airport info, info, left click on that, it will open up a few screens and look at this, it's Googled it and opened up so much information for you. Now these other screens are simply information that we don't need for this video, so I'm going to close these two windows down. But these two screens, say I wanted an aerial view, so this is uh, the arrival airport, London City, I wanted to have that in the simulator. I can go back here, go to any of these tabs, A01, A02, A03, let's go to the top one, A01. I can click grab. 
move this box over to where I want to grab and I can resize this box to wherever, whatever size I want, drag it to where I want, press the enter key on your keyboard and you can give that a name, it's an aerial view so that will do there, the aerial, hey presto, I'll show you what this does later. So I wanted a chart of the airport. I'm going to click grab again. Now I googled this separately, this approach chart for London City, but I want to grab that so I'm going to click grab again and I can resize this window. I want to get the whole thing in, in here so I can resize this window to any size I want. Let's make it try and make it neatish. Doesn't have to be perfect for this example. Oops. Oh, you know, that'll do. Press enter. And I'm going to call that uh, airport chart. Oops, what on earth? Chart. And click OK. And now that's in. And again, I'll show you what that that does later. Say on the flight plan here. Now, by the way, I can get more information there if I wanted to have this map in there as well. What is that? Uh, it's a kind of flight plan. Let's go back one. IFR chart. So yeah, let's do that. So I wanted this information. This information here. Again, I can go to here, go grab, move down to the next tab. So I'm going to put it in the next tab, A03, press grab, resize this to whatever size I want here, make it a little bit neat. And just as an example, I wanted that section. Press enter, and I can call that IFR chart. And bingo, that's now in as well. I could do exactly the same for the departure airport. Go to here, Google information, and I can get aerial views, charts, and goodness knows what. But I want a flight plan, and I want a moving flight plan to see where I am in the simulator. So I'll click on flight plan here. Go back to my sky vector, which I'm already on here. Click back one. This is not a tutorial, it's just an overview to show you what you can do with this program, keep that in mind. I'll click on this VFR chart here. Now, this is quite an interesting thing. It's just a straightforward Gatwick to London City. If I wanted to alter this, I'm just mousing in, I wanted to make this more interesting. I can grab this purple line here. I can move it around, say I wanted to fly there first. So coming off the runway, straight ahead from the runway. So a straight sort of flight from the runway to here. Once I've released the mouse, I can go here and click on plan. It will add it to the flight plan. And you can see even the sort of vectors it's given me sort of. I come off the runway at 077 heading. And is that three, five, four, the next? Anyway, I can move this across this purple line wherever I want and add it to my plan. And I'll show you the magic of this in a moment. Click on plan again. So I'm going to add that point to my plan. And I'm going to add that point. So I'm coming straight hit in from this point. Let's hope I don't hit any buildings on the way. I will come straight in. Well, obviously you can test this out, but I can add this to the plan. As you can see, I've now made my flight plan more interesting. Let's go back to EFB. And here, on this first tab, I want to grab that image, that map image I just created. I can zoom in a little bit. That's fine move this window so it's more neat so I'm just grabbing the flight plan in effect oops I'll just have to move 
that down a bit so I've got the whole plan. I might have to just scroll out a little. Scroll out a little bit. Thank you. Like I said, I'm just trying to grab. So I'm just resizing the window. You can see how versatile already the program is. But I've only just started, really. And grab this. Oh, don't need to be too anal about this. That'll do. Press enter. And I'm going to call that. Flight plan. Simple enough. And press OK. So now that's in. But I want this to be a moving map. I know there's programs out there already that can do this in Flight Simulator 2020. But to have it all in one place with all these other things I'm going to show you is quite incredible. I want this to be a moving map. I can click define as moving map. Now, like I say, I don't want to make a tutorial of this, but you do have to set a couple of parameters or points to make this possible. I'm going to set the whole limit. I'm going to set known points. I'm going to set my departure airport on top there, Gatwick EGKK. Click on that and then click on Gatwick. And that's point one. And then for point two, I want my arrival airport, which is... London City. I'm not sure I'm doing this exactly correctly. Like I said, I'm just playing around with it. I'm going to link in the description, or maybe link in the top right there, a video by Sam himself, who's obviously more professional. He developed this, and he talks you through how to do a lot of this stuff as well. But I'm going to click on there. And then I'm going to set the whole image. And this will make sense when I want the map to move within the simulator. And you can just see there's so much in this program. I'm barely scratching the surface. And there we go. Active area set. These are all set. Finished. So I've got a moving map. Well, that will be a moving map within Flight Simulator. I want to go back into this and I want to add notes for myself when I'm flying of when to turn even though I can see it on the moving map effectively I want to add notes and like I said if you go and watch a couple of Sam's videos some of the example flights he's got here he's added notes so he's added points of interest if you're creating a multiplayer flight or even a flight for yourself and you want to add points of interest in here you can. I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll cut the video here, write up what I'm going to write up, sort of uh, different areas and different perimeters for my flight, and then I'll come back when I've finished. Okay, so on the flight plan part here, I've just added a few notes. Now, there's it's an important point here to put plus on each point of the note and I'll show you why in the simulator later but basically I've just said here on the first part there from the airport take off on a heading of 077 climb to 1200 feet you can write that whichever way you want I've just made it simple and wrote it this way waypoint one which will be here turn to a heading of 323 maintain 1200 feet and 100 knots blah 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 until you get to the uh, London City Airport turn onto a heading of 094 prepare the aircraft for a landing in London City Airport you can write whatever you want there the important point parts here is putting a plus here on each point because then it will bring it up in the simulator on a different point you can imagine the scope and what you can do with this and the writing. Like I said, if you're preparing multiplayer flights or flights for friends or flights for yourself or flights you want to publish elsewhere, you can do so much with this. An incredible amount. I'm just scratching the surface of this. Another thing I want to do here, actually, I want to go back to Sky Factor just to show you more of what you can do. Go to my Navlog. I want to copy this information right here into into my uh, EFB as well. So I'll go down to the next point here, Z F02, you can put these pretty much anywhere, but I'll put it here, F02, press grab, 
put the screen over here. Make it nice and neat. Actually, I can increase that, can't I? Increase the range so I can see what I'm doing better there. And I'm going to copy my nav log information here from Sky Vector. And I can bring this up in the simulator too. Press enter. Uh, nav log. Okay. So there you go. That's just a basic thing I've done. Go and look at a couple of... You get the program. Go and look at a couple of Sam's examples here. He has so much information in these sort of fly plant examples. But this is just something I've put together. And what you would do here now, once you've got everything in and you're happy with it, you go to the Publish button. I've not got Flight Simulator running. And here you have different options. I can pub ignore these at the top for the moment, because I'm going to make this a quick overview video. But I can publish to Flight Simulator 2020, which I'll do. Flight Simulator 2020 for VR. I'll possibly make a future video on this in VR because I believe this is highly optimized for VR and these panels work well with it so you can do that if you're flying VR or external panel if you've got a different monitor and you want all this information on a different monitor you can do that I'm gonna publish it like I said straight to flight simulator 2020 it's done it's in so what I'll do now, I'll go into the simulator and show you all this working in Flight Simulator 2020. Okay, so here I am in the simulator. Obviously I'm running at full screen. I've still got Sim EFB running in the background, uh, but you don't need it on top of the simulator screen for it to work. Now I'm at Gatwick Airport, I've just went to the world map and said set as departure Gatwick Airport uh, 08 right I could have put that in the perimeters of the program before but it doesn't matter if I go to the top here you can see three new icons EFB1, EFB2 and EFB3 so I'll click on EFB1 and show you what this does and this gives me all my flight notes. So as you can see, this is what I typed in. This is why you need to put the plus on after each point. Because you can actually click on each category. And then it will tell you whatever you wrote in before will come up. So this is all the things I wrote in before. Take off. Fly to a heading of 077. Climb to 1200 feet. Waypoint 2, waypoint 3, waypoint 4, etc. Let's show you something else. Let's go to EFB2. And I can go to... Got all different things. You remember the aerial shot before? Look. And you can resize these windows. So you can put whatever information you want in here. To an extent. And you've got all this. I can even zoom in and out with the map there. Go back to home. What I want to go to here is moving map. show you why in a moment right I've got my uh, multi-panel set up so I'm gonna go autopilot for this to make things slightly easier for myself I'll go full throttle and obviously hopefully take off and I'll show you some more stuff that this can do as well and basically like I said I am scratching the surface I've only had it for a couple of days and I've been testing it out in between doing many other things in my life at the moment let's go full autopilot click on heading and alt and that will take me on a heading of 077 to a height of 1200 feet I won't go through the whole plan with you but, as you can see, this map's moving along. Yes, you can do this with other utilities for Flight Simulator 2020, but you don't get everything else that comes with this EFB. Say, for example, whilst I'm flying, I want to look at my approach chart for my airport. 
a presto and I can resize these screens to whatever size I want scroll up and down zoom in and out to see various different informations you can see the practical uses potential uses for this and the versatility this is where I am at the moment am I no maybe not <laughs> But this gives me the sort of airport chart as well. If I go to Homey, I can choose different things like I showed you before. The IFR chart. So you want to look at all different informations on this. And you can do this with any of these screens. Well, these couple of screens here. You can go back here if you want to and look at various things. Whilst your nav log there, for example. Whilst you're flying along. Let's go back to the moving map. And like I said, don't take this overview as it being all it can do. There's a lot more this can do. Go and look at Sam's video. I'm going to link it in the description. Like I said, I linked it in the video before one of his videos. Go and look at his videos on this. I'm going to be scrutinizing them to see... I get rid of that map, in fact, so I can see more of the world around me. I'm going to be scrutinising them so I can get the most out of this program. I'm loving it so far. And of course, if you find all this a bit too distracting, there's too much going on, you can obviously get rid of the screens or move them around to different corners. If you're flying VR, you can have them on top of the screen. So if you look up, you'll see these screens on top. Like I said, I'll probably uh, come back to the VR, make a VR video or something or showing you the application usage of this in VR in the future because I believe it's highly optimized for that if you've got a different screen put all this information on a different screen you've got an electronic flight bag which is a lot more than it, I'm, I'm showing you at the moment that you can have to one side and you can look at all kinds of information while you're flying along so basically like I said, I don't want to make this video too long. Once we get to this point here, I'll come onto a heading of 323 as these little notes I made. If I wanted to add more to these notes, I could in the front end, in the Sim EFB front end, put points of interest. So as I'm turning on here, Look out to your left, look out to your right, you'll see blah 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 when I get nearer to London. If you look ahead, you could see the Shard, whatever, you know, London Bridge, whatever information you want to put in there, you can put in there. Absolutely incredible what this, the potential of what this can do. And I do believe it's a sim changer for Flight Simulator 2020. You had this type of thing, electronic flight bag with Flight Simulator X. Not quite as versatile as this, I've got to say. But you had this type of thing with Flight Simulator X, possibly X-Plane as well. Great to see this now in Flight Simulator 2020, the home of simulation for many of us currently. So, like I say, oh! I should have throttled back. You can see I'm not obeying my own commands there. Let's get back to around 100 knots. And if you're doing multiplayer flights, I know a lot of you that watch my videos do a lot of multiplayer flights. You can put all kinds of interesting information. It'll be interesting to, look t to go back to one of the old multiplayer flights we did using this application. And everybody's got this on the screen information about what to do. Coming into landing, you can prepare people. Ugh, so much you can do with this. Honestly, I'm gushing over it because I think it's brilliant. Coming up to our first waypoint, which would be waypoint 1, so we'll be turning on, I can zoom in on this, so I can see how close we get into it. Oops, coming slightly off course, I've altered my course just to stay on this uh, purple line. Move the map down a bit if I want to, so we're saying turn on our heading, which I'll do soon. And then we'll probably finish the video, because, like I said, you don't need to see me do the whole flight in this video. 
Turn on our heading of 323. I'll start turning in preparation now. Like I said, I don't ever set up the parameters for this earlier. Sam, if you're watching this, you can comment on what I set up before with the moving map thing to define it as a moving map. If there's a better way of doing that, or if I've not done it correctly, let me know. I'll let the viewers know. There you go, I've turned on a heading of 323. I could have done that a little bit sooner, so I stayed on the purple line. That's not too bad though, is it? And there you go, and then we'll continue on our merry way right up to London City Airport. So there you go, listen chaps, that will do for this video. I'm just showing you the versatility and the potential of what you can do with this if you put your mind to it. Like I said, the only information I've got from Sam is that it's going to be available in the middle of next month for around €28 Euro from various different outlets, Sim Market, Aerosoft or Aerofly. Whenever I find out more information, I'll put it down in the description. Do let me know your thoughts on this video. Give it a like if it's been helpful to you. Subscribe for more. Very likely to visit this particular program again in a video in the future. And I'll see you soon.